everybody, it's Sam and Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This is a Easter card in the shape of an Easter egg and it's a shaker card. Uh, little shakes around there. It's got these really cute little bunnies and then it says, some bunny loves you. And then you open it up. Again, I need to stamp. I always forget to stamp the insides, but I'll just put Happy Easter there. And then on the back, it's got this little stand, which folds flat so it all fits in the envelope but it just means that that will sit up nicely for whoever you give it to because without that it will just roll all over the place so really really fun card this is using um, a set of easter egg shaped dies by x cup um, I've got the largest one here on my tray um, so that's the largest one and then you get one two three four five other ones there as well so it's a really really good one um, to use and again I'll share all the links of that one for you but I'm going to be using the biggest one today um, and everything else so I bring all this in actually I'll show you the papers first so all the papers that I've been using for a few of the projects this week are the free printables from Trimcraft and it's their Easter 2018 file um, I'll share all the links to that but there's some beautiful ones you've got this um, real life um, grass um, you've got a sheet of sentiments, um, so there's obviously the Sun Bunny Loves You, these ones, then there's a Happy Easter banner, there's the Little Bunny, which again I've used on another project, and then you get this A4 um, uh, pattern, the polka dot, this A4 sheet which has got Happy Easter all over it, which I'm using today, that's again that one because I printed a few, and this is this one here which is the bunnies. The reason I just randomly cut it out in the middle, because usually I say, obviously try and keep your die cuts, you know, close together so you don't waste card, but I wanted the way the bunnies are there, so I had that full image of the bunny in the center, so that's why. But I've still got lots there I can use. So they're the papers that I'm using. Okay, so you are going to need, I'll explain all about that in a minute, Let's just get everything laid out. I don't know if I'm gonna use these yet, um, they're just some little um, daisy um, flowers that I brought from the range, UK. Right, so, get rid of my acetate so I can see where that is. Um, I'm not sure if I'm using that sentiment yet. Okay, so basically to get this shape here, so it's a partial die cut to form this um, card in the egg shape, is I used a pre-cut um, card. This is a five by seven. And then you get your die and you put it on and you basically want to have a little bit on the left hand side that overhangs. So if I turn that upside down, can you see here? That piece there is overhanging. So now when I run that through the dye machine, just put a bit of washi tape to keep it in place, it will cut all of this, but it will leave the straight part of the card intact, which basically then gives you that effect. So it keeps it closed. Okay, so that's what you want to do first is die cut that to get that shape then and this will work if you're not doing an Easter theme this will work with a square um, if you don't have any square base um, you know square cards pre-made you just do that on just fold over some normal cardstock and then run your square die through rectangle dies star dies uh, circle dies any anything you want then I've die cut um, the same size in this print here and then the same size again in this pattern here. And now this pattern is gonna stick on top of the top, which is gonna be basically what this blue pattern is here. So first of all, that will go like so. And then this one, so obviously I've die cut, is gonna go on top, but we now need to create this frame. Now to do so, you need the second size down and I can get rid of this scoreboard. Actually, before I get rid of the scoreboard, for your stand, you need a little piece of card which measures five and a half by two inches, and along the five and a half inch side, you want to score at half an inch, three inches, four inches, and five inches. Okay, so we get that done and dusted. Move that over there for a second. Okay, so yeah, so now I'm just gonna bring in my cutting plates and with the piece that I want to use my frame for we then need to use the next size down and we're going to sit that in the middle 
like so. Okay, so get it as centered as possible. Put my plate down. Okay, so carefully take out that center bit and you will be left with this frame. Okay, so now I'm gonna just get this piece glued down. Okay, it will all fit in perfectly. And you'll have a little bit that will overhang on the back there, but don't worry, I mean, no one's gonna see that. Okay, so now with this piece here, um, you want to grab your largest of those two dies again, and this time you're gonna cut some acetate. So again, I'm just gonna sit that on top of my acetate sheet here. Pop it on top of my plate and just get that cut Okay, out. so again, just carefully remove that. You may get a little bit, yeah, it's all right to cut right through. And just kind of we'll wipe all that clean in a minute, all those shavings. And now this frame will sit perfectly over the top of the acetate sheet. So what you need to do now, and I find best to use, is the thinnest of the red tape. And you need to basically hog right on the very end of this acetate and go all the way around with the red tape, literally right up to the very edge. I'm just working this tape. I bring it up there, you can see what I'm doing. Working it right around to the very edge. And the process I'm doing here, you will do for any shaker card any one that you're using die cut shapes like I'm using, nesting sized um, die cuts. Okay, Okay. so then just go over with your bone tool and just really make sure that that red tape is all stuck down. Because obviously we've gone around a curved shape, it won't be completely flat. But once we take that top layer of tape off, it will be fine when you stick it onto this frame. So now I can peel this piece off like so, and then very carefully you need to now stick this over the top. Now you can't, you can just about see the acetate, but I really need to lean over this a minute, so I'm just going to spend some time to get this right. So focused on the top and the corner there, the top and the bottom, sorry, and then I can just go around on the sides, like so. If you're slightly wonky, just trim any of the acetate. So I can see, just catching in the light there, there's some acetate that's just kind of come over this side. That's completely fine because you can trim the acetate okay. away. If you're worried that you won't be able to perfectly line up this frame with this same size piece of acetate, trim your acetate about one eighth of an inch smaller all the way around first and then stick it over the back and it should be fine. So I'm just gonna go over and just go over with the bone tool again and you can see if there's any white bits on the tape, that's because it's not stuck down properly. So if you just rub over, you'll get rid of those kind of air bubbles and stuff, like so. Now what we need to do is apply double-sided foam all the way around here. So my little trick, and what I've shared in quite a few tutorials now, and on quite a lot of my live tutorials I do over on my Facebook page, just grab a strip of your double-sided tape, your foam tape, and this is just greaseproof paper baking paper, anything with a um, shiny, smooth um, surface. And then just trim that. Like so. Cut off this excess, just so it doesn't get in the way when you go to use it. And again, get rid of that. Like so. And then we want to cut this into very thin strips. So the reason I put it on this greaseproof paper is so that we can cut into very, very thin strips without it ruining your scissors. So I'm literally doing maybe one eighth of an inch strips because this is a very thin border. So I need it to be able to fit within that gap. Obviously, if your board is much thicker, then you would do your tape thicker. So just, you know, look at whatever it is that is your the, the width of your frame, and then cut accordingly. So this is much, much cheaper than buying those rather expensive rolls 
of thin tape, especially for shaker cards. And by doing this little trick, it means you don't ruin your scissors. You see, they're cutting through perfectly. So I'm just cutting off two. I think one is enough, actually. Um, already some of the backing is coming off there, so just need to be a bit careful. Basically now, just take off that backing that's already starting to come off itself and just pop it in the middle of your frame. And just go all the way around. And obviously it's really easy to work because it will bend wherever you want it to go. Again. Making sure I don't go over any of the inner or the outside edge. And I think, if I remember rightly, yeah, it meets literally perfectly. I couldn't have, you know, couldn't have guessed that was going to happen. Look, perfect. Now, if you want to make this more raised, so thicker, what you're going to do is peel off this top layer, like so grab your second piece and do exactly the same and stick it directly on top again. And this will give you that really deep shaker card so that anything that you're putting inside will shake nice and freely, will move. So again, just keeping my finger and thumb either side of the tape there, just making sure it all stays nice and even. And again, it just meets up perfectly. Well, it's a little bit out, this one. But basically, you just don't want to have a gap that's big enough for whatever it is you're putting inside to fall out of. I know a sequin won't get through that gap, so that's fine. Okay, so that is now, you can see, that is going to stick on top eventually once we put our shaker bits inside. And then you'll be able to shake that around. And you'll have a really, really fun card. And it's nice and obviously thick there. And you get a nice, it looks nice and neat from the side as well. Um, okay, another little trick again, which I've shared for those of you that follow me, you'll know exactly what I'm doing now, but as I always say, there's always someone new watching. You can use, if you already have one of your anti-statics in one of those brushes, then you can just brush it straight on. I have that little um, anti-static embossing buddy, and at the bottom of my little tin here is all this excess powder. Just with a paintbrush, I'm picking it up, and I'm just going to rub that powder on the inside of this double-sided tape and it will stop any of your sequins sticking to the side. If you're not bothered about that, then you can completely skip this stage, but it really bugs me if I've got one sequin like stuck at the top when all the others are at the bottom. So just by doing this, it prevents it. It doesn't always get every single one. There's always some, you know, sometimes that one that still does find its way, but you know, every time I do this, I pretty much, you know, don't get any sticking where I don't want them. And it just gets rid of any static that might be on your acetate as well. So it stops the sequence kind of all sticking just to the acetate sheet, um, which sometimes happens as well. Now I can see where all the dust is, so I can see that I'm brushing it all on. And in a minute we'll just buff up our acetate inside. Again, just to make sure it's all nice and shiny again. Always make sure you do this with that top piece of tape on because obviously you'll make your top piece um, won't be sticky anymore and it won't stick down when you come to that part. So don't remove the top backing yet. So I'm happy that that is all coated with the powder. And you can go around and feel it with your finger. I can feel that there's nothing there that's okay, sticky. Okay, so now I just need to clean that up inside. I've just got some cotton wool and I'm just spraying a little bit of um, surgical spirit on this. You can just use water, soapy water, it will be fine. But I just find that this gets rid of any marks and just go around and it will pick up any excess dust and it will also get off any marks like so. Flip it over, give it a wipe on the front as well because that won't touch the bottom now because obviously we've got that foam backing and then just get a dry side and kind of go and buff that all up. I'm just going to bring in, I'll use this side just so it doesn't get any more marks. So now that is nice and shiny. So next we now need to put, if you're going to stamp images and things like that, you want to do that now on this side. Obviously I've got a printed background so I don't need to worry about that, but if you do want a sentiment then get that done now. I'm going to use my 
um, sequins and I'm going for these ones here because they're pretty much clear they've just got a slight color and I don't want any other color sequins to get out so I'm just going to tip quite a lot into this because I've got nothing else going in there and there's no no sentiment as such it's just a patterned paper so um, maybe I'll take a few out put those ones back in I think that's about right so then I'm just going to spread them out take a few more again there you go that'll do and I've got one rogue one there's always one last time i done a shaker card i had one little one get in so i've got that one this time because that was quite okay so i'm just color. pushing it all into the center making sure that none of it none of it is over where i know that border is going to stick down okay like so then grab this piece remove that backing and again i'm just going to lean over just so i can get this in the right place okay, so that is now stuck down and then Give it a good shake to break everything up. But you can see none of them stick to the side. They all move freely. There you go, you can see none of them are on the other side. And you can see all the sentiments nicely still as well. But it's just super, super fun. I love that. So let's get the base stuck on. So this is that piece that we already scored. So just burnish all of those score lines. And then what you're going to do is you've got this big, bigger area here with this tab on the end, fold that one up. The one where you've got the three together, you wanna to fold it up, that one up like so. And then this one and this one, you're gonna put glue on and that's gonna to stick to the back of the card. So when it opens up, it creates that stand. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab my wet glue. You can use double-sided tape on this bit if you want. Like so. Turn this one over and then just sit your stand just so it's nice and even on the back and it's literally the points of the stand are coming down to the very edge of the card like so. Make sure it's all nice and straight otherwise it will uh, just lift it up and test it. See once that comes out, there you go, that stands up really nicely. So just sit that okay guys, so there. that's how I finish this one off. So at the bottom I've just fussy cut one of the sentiments. Um, which are the part of the free printables that you can get and then I've just fussy cut the little eggs here and this little bunny finished it off with a few little sequins and I absolutely love that shaker card I think that's really really cute love it so there you have it so there's two really cute little cards um, I'll share all the links to again to the um, file to get these um, downloadables um, they always put good ones up every month there's a free different um, you know papers to print off so keep an eye out for those as well but in the meantime hope you've enjoyed today and uh, please subscribe to my channel if you do enjoy these tutorials and give me a thumbs up as well if you did like it thanks for watching bye